Um, today we are doing part three. I should be part one, but but you're not. Whatever. It is going to be part three, which is what you're watching right now to this random anniversary one year series I am doing. So today, Devin is going to be answering some questions. Hello, who are you? Hi, I am Devin Rose Park, and I am JC's older sister, her best sister sister that she wishes she could be one day her absolute role model um she wishes that she looked like me i mean i have questions for devin devin does not know what these questions are she i'm going to read questions to devin that she's never seen before <laughs> she is going to answer them and she can answer them any way she wants she can do short answers she can do long answers she can have any emotion towards them. These are her rights to these questions, and everyone has the same rules for these answers as everyone else that you're gonna see in the next couple parts. Devin. Yes. In your head, what was your perspective on what was going on with me last year this time? Um, it was very rocky, very emotional. Um, I was angry at the fact of what was going on with you and our family. Um, what are your feelings, what were your feelings about it? Like, especially, like, now. Like, compared then to now? Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, like, last year was so emotional, and I feel like a year, you know, now, it's just such it went by so quick yeah and it's just if it, it feels like so much is like lifted off all our shoulders that's true like it's just so much more relaxed and so i feel like everyone was it's like just in more calm yeah. yeah i just feel like we were just on edge 24 7 this time last year you just yeah. never knew what was going to happen at any second so you were just kind of you know preparing for whatever yeah you know you know, I was telling mommy too, and, the other, and you guys already heard this, but I want to know what Devin thinks about this. Like, isn't it weird how we all thought the same thing, but no one said it? Said it? Mm -hmm. I think because we were trying to protect everyone's feelings. Yeah, and, but like we all did know that everyone knew. Right. But everyone, everyone knew, but no one wants to say anything out loud. Yeah, it was weird. Like, yeah. I always felt like, like I, was, I obviously knew, <laughs> not dumb, but like I always felt like like I never wanted to say it. Mm -hmm. It was like I don't know. So I feel like if you especially say it, especially coming true. from you, yeah. And I feel like especially if I said it, then everyone was just gonna like fall. Yeah. Cause I'm like I felt like if I wasn't strong last year, then everyone was just gonna like plummet. I feel like everyone had to be strong in their own different ways. Yeah. Like there was um, I feel like everyone kind of had their own role. <laughs> the night of the call. How were you feeling like that day? Um, that day just felt like every other day <laughs> in the morning because you didn't get the call till nighttime. Um, Explain just, your day. I woke up, I went to school, went to work, and then after work I went to um, my boyfriend's job at Dodge and he did a oil change on my car. That was really my day. When the call came, what were your thoughts? Okay, so I was eating dinner. At, well, I was about to eat dinner at Devante's house and mommy texted me and she said, Devin, come home. Now, my mom never really even calls me Devin. She calls me Rosie, Dev, Jevin, when she mixes our names. Yeah, when she's trying to call when both she talks of us. Too fast, <laughs> yeah. faster than she actually talks. Um, like, everything was, like, messed up in the text. Nothing was spelled right and I just instantly got a weird feeling and I got up and I literally ran out of his house. I got in my car and um I was driving home and that's just it was weird. I could just got this weird feeling that it was the call cuz mommy never answered me. Um so when I was driving, I got this weird gut feeling and I said, "You know what? She got the call. I know that this is it." And I was speeding home. I mean, I think that's the fastest I ever drove. 
and I was getting around the corner from my house and um, I see I took my seatbelt off, my lights were off in my car. The second I pulled up to the house, I don't even know if I locked my doors. Um, I jumped out and I ran into the house. Yeah. And um, you were crying and you were sitting on the chair and mommy was in her room. She was packing all like her um, bags and stuff. And I said, mom, what's going on? And she can't answer me cause she's so emotional. She's, you know, crying her eyes out. I was like, ma, what's going on? And I said, did she get the call? And she said, yeah, and I said, all right. And I came out here and I looked at you and I just lost it. Yeah, I remember that too. It took me a second. I think it all kind of took, well, I know Remix, I was there when like the call came because I, was like, I wasn't going anywhere. So I remember like, it was just like such a like surreal moment. Mm -hmm, and Devin sure. was the very last one to know that I got the call. And it wasn't like anything towards Devin. It was just like, cause there were so many people that it's were- just I wasn't home. Yeah, it was like, cause you weren't home and grandma and grandpa just left a few hours before mm -hmm. that. And like the first thing when I have a problem was I call my grandparents, like it's just, Facts. Like we another to. another really weird thing that I want to make known is that this was the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving yeah. was obviously on a Thursday. So it was Thursday, oh my God. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So just a few days after Thanksgiving, and I went to Thanksgiving mass with my grandma, and I was just really hopeful. Not there. I, mm. you know, I was physically there, but I mentally wasn't sitting there in church because of everything that was going on, and. You know, at that time, I truly think I was questioning my religion, to be completely honest. Because yeah. I was thinking, you know, why would this happen to my sister? Why is this happening to me and my family? You know, why is my mom going through what she's going through? Why is my grandparents going through what they're going through? Why is my dad? Why is myself? You know, I just had so many questions, and I just didn't understand why. And, um, and that's so hard my you. grandmom, she turned to me. And she said, we're going to have a Christmas miracle. I looked at her like she was crazy, and I turned my head. And I didn't say two words, because I didn't believe it. Mm. I truly didn't. And isn't it, remember how um, Pat was saying to like, that morning he felt like something That morning, happen. yeah. And, like, he was like, bro, something's going to happen. Like, meaning my grandma. He gets, my grandma gets these feelings, and he's always right. He's always right always about right. things. And even grandma, when she he gets, like, up, little things about that. He told me that he woke up that morning. This was in the morning when I saw him that day. Yeah. And he said, I woke up today, and it was really weird. I felt like something. And you guys got to remember, mm. they would come over said, every I day. I said, mm. I said, I don't I don't know what it could be. Well. Well, did we know? <laughs> now I know what it was. Yeah. Um, when I was, like, when we got, like, that night, like, we got to call, like, how, like, like, when mom, like, we and we all left. Like, what were, like, uh, when your... you, mommy, and daddy left? Yeah. Um, I was scared. I remember I was just sitting here on the couch and I was holding Ollie and my mind was racing and Devante was sitting at the table and I think, you know, it took a toll on him too. Yeah. I think he was just, you know, trying to be strong for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was kind of just sitting at the table, you know, just looking at me and, you know, I could tell that he wanted to cry, but he didn't really want to. And I was just sitting on the couch and I was holding Ollie and I was kind of just like, you know, on the verge of tears again. And I was, my mind was literally racing. And it was November 28th when you guys got the call. And I was thinking, they're on their way to Pittsburgh. It's 11 o'clock at night. So by the time she gets a transplant, it's gonna be November 29th. And the first time she got her transplant, it was August 29th. Mm -hmm. And my head, like, I was just thinking these crazy things. And I texted mommy. You guys were maybe going 20 minutes. And I texted mommy. I said, she's going to get her transplant on the 29th again. I said, there's something about the number 29. That we And she that. said, oh my God. She's like, you're, you're right. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And. And isn't it, were you nervous? It was weird. Like they were going to call mommy and tell us, like, you have to drive home? No. Really? Yeah. I didn't really, I never really second guessed that. Hmm. Because I kind of just felt like, you know. It was the call because we yeah. were so desperate, maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it was that, or I don't know if it was... I don't know. Could be because we, because we like, the first time around, we never, like... I was definitely, um, really crazy. Like, um, mm -hmm. like, when you guys left, and then, you know, I was thinking, you know, in the morning, like, I knew my grandparents were going to, like, head out over there, and I just knew that I was going to be here alone, you know, 
I had, like, my grandparents weren't 10 minutes away from me right over the bridge in South Philly, you know, or my dad wasn't right there over the bridge, or, you know, I didn't know, I didn't, like, I felt kind of alone, even though I had my boyfriend and his family, and I have mm. all their family that's here in Jersey and stuff like that, like, I just kind of felt like my People immediate, you talk to every I kind of just felt like my immediate world was kind of just, like, like, leaving me, and I don't want to sound selfish, because I completely, 110% understand why, Yeah, but it was, it was because I was just so emotional, I was just like, all right, well, you know, Pop and Grandma are going to go out tomorrow, I think it was more of, like, planning, planning in my head, yeah. you know, like, all right, my Grandma and Grandpa are going to go out tomorrow, my dad's with them right now, you know, I know my dad's going to get them safe, and, you know, I just hope, you know, Pop gets good sleep tonight because I know as soon as he wakes up, up in the morning, he'll wake up and, you know. Or he'll be up four, thinking. He'll, he'll be up thinking at 4 30 and be like, bro, we gotta go. We can't wait anymore. So I was just kind of like planning and just kind of hoping that everything was kind of, you know, going its way. And I knew that, you know, I had to take care of the dog and I had to, you know, take care of the house and everything. And I was okay with it. It was just a little, like, scary. Because it happened so fast. I wasn't yeah. prepared for it. No one was prepared for any of this. Like, my dad, when he came over, um, like, two minutes after I got home, um, he came over and he was like, I came right from work. I don't have any clothes packed. I don't have anything. And you guys had to so, get to anyway. Yeah. So we went, um, me, my dad, and Devante, we went to Walmart and we ran to like a few different stores like Target and things like that. Yeah. My dad got, you know, just like you guys, clothes like, to last them a few days. Huh? Were you guys like rushing through stores? Um, no. Because that was when they told us that they were going to give us two hours until yeah. we knew if the organs were healthy mm-hmm. or not. So we were kind of, you know, I think Daddy was kind of like wasting time a little bit. I feel like he needed to breathe also. Yeah, because I thought, yeah. I remember being in the store with him and, you know, he was just getting like sweatpants, socks, you know, just like toothpaste, you know, just like little things just to get on for the next few days while, you know, she was under the transplant mm-hmm. and um, until like he, you know, could feel comfortable enough to right. like leave the hospital to go to a store, you know, whatever. And I remember being in the store with him and... I would just look at him. I'd lose it all over again. And I would just cry and cry and cry. Yeah, and then it's like... And, like, he would just hold me. He's like, Dev, it's all right. It's all right. You know, we're going to get through this. This is the best thing that could ever happen to us. And, you know... Is it so weird, like, how fast? Yeah. It like, was, it was like, in a snap of a finger. It was, like, insane. For real. I feel like everything, like, just, like... To me, honestly, like, that two-hour phone call... Like, that two-hour, like, wait felt like a billion years but like that's when like i called my doctor and all which i told you guys already yeah, and it was like that was long and do you remember like the first time you saw me like in the icu mm-hmm. elaborate to that <laughs> okay um so i remember that's when you were still in your coma and um i actually know i saw you when you were coming out of your coma mm-hmm. the day i got there that night before they started taking you out of your coma oh like slightly yeah like very 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 tiny like very very slightly to where she was like barely responding to things um but I remember going there and mommy was like in the middle of all these transplant doctors my dad came home and he got me and we went out to Pittsburgh I dropped the dog off at my grandparents and um I remember going into there and I remember, um, mommy was sitting there in a circle of transplant doctors, <laughs> and I was like, I'm barging through. I walked she right like, through them, and I went right to her, and she started responding, you know, just like, you know, lifting her eyebrows a little bit. Her eyes were still shut, but like, I talked to her, and she lifted her eyebrows. I remember that. That's the first day I responded? Mm-hmm. And it was uh, to did, me. Didn't even and, know that. And mommy was like, I can't believe you, JC. I'm sitting here trying to talk to you, and you're sitting here listening to your sister, and all this stuff so um I was like you know I was sitting there with her I was talking to her and I remember um I said to you I said I bet mommy was driving you crazy playing Christmas music above your head because Mm -hmm. she my mom kept calling me on FaceTime every night oh yeah well I have JC's phone playing Christmas Pandora I have it above her head I'm like you're gonna drive her crazy she don't want it I don't like Christmas music when I don't feel like it's Christmas when I don't feel like I'm in the Christmas spirit I hate Christmas music and I remember saying that to you and you kind of like slightly smirked yeah like yeah and um 
<laughs> yeah, and then you were coming out of it, and by the end of the time that I was there, after the few days, you were hallucinating really bad. Uh, that's when the, that's when I started waking up. They were like, all right, put her all on the pain meds, and then yeah. they were she, like dosing me. She kind of came out of the coma a little fast, I think. Because um, I don't like, I fight the medicines when I show it. I don't know I'm doing it, but I do. And um, then that's my mom. My mom and dad went to the store, um, you know, like to get out of the hospital. And I was sitting there with her, and um, <laughs> she started hallucinating like really bad. And I was sitting there, like I had like looking at her, like she had like ten heads. I'm like, what are you talking about? And this one time, she's looking at me, and then she's looking above me, like not not moving her head, moving her eyes. And then she's looking at me, and then look, she goes. Like, she's obviously said this, like, real quiet and, like... Right, but it was still yeah. quiet in the room. But, like, I'm just saying it out loud. Like, yeah. she was like, did you feel that? I said, what? She goes, pennies are falling on your head. I said, I swear. I said, nothing. I said, nothing's hitting my head. She goes, doesn't that hurt? I said, what? She goes, there's pennies. And then, it, then she'd fall asleep for, like, maybe 10 minutes. Then she'd wake back up and she'd have another hallucination. She was telling me to paint the walls because people were coming through them. No, bees. Bees, those bees. Bees were, bees were flying through the walls. You know, that's funny too because they weren't like real bees. And they were like cartoon bees. They looked like little, fu like giant fuzzy balls. And I said, <laughs> and, I, and I, then that's when I kind of started going along with her hallucinations. And I said, so um, if I paint the walls purple, the bees will stop coming through? She's like, yeah, hurry up and paint them. And I was like, all right, all right, I will. And then um, you fell asleep again for like 10 minutes and wow. you wake up and then there's another one. You Then you started freaking out and you were screaming and you were crying. You're like, all these people are in the room and they're staring at me. And I was like, nuh-uh. I said, JC, I said, I promise you it's just me. I said, nobody else is in the room. And she was like, you're making all these people look at me. And she's like, she's freaking out. I, I said, JC, I said, JC, I said, there's no one in here. I promise you, I promise you. And then I was holding her, you know, I was like, you know, leaning on top of her and I was like, kind of like holding her. And she was like, get them out of here. I don't want anybody staring at me. And she's screaming. And I said, JC, I promise you, it's just me. I'm not going to let anybody touch you. There's no one in here. Was my nurse in here at all? No, there was no one in there. It was just Oof. me. And you were screaming. And that, like, I felt so, like, hopeless. Because there was nothing I could do, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, I feel like I, you had another hallucination about me, but I forgot. I had a hallucination when Daddy was, when it was yes. Daddy. Yes. So, my, so me and my mom, um, I want my mom to go sleep. And then the next morning, that the next morning was when me and my dad were leaving. And my dad stayed in the, um, hospital room with JC. Mm -hmm. And, um... This is kind of funny, kind of not. Um, I feel, uh, I so I woke, yeah, this is, yeah. yeah. So I woke up at um like seven o'clock in the morning. I was like, mom, let's go. Like, I want to go see her. Like, that was the time I was allowed in the ICU. So um, she's like, all right. So we get all ready and I go into the room and she just looked different to me. There was just something about her that just like looked different. <laughs> and I guess me being her sister or whatever it was, I just knew yeah. that she did something. And she's holding her big penguin in front of her face. And I'm like looking at her. I'm like, Jace, I'm like, what did you do? And she's smirking at me. Now it's like seven o'clock in the morning. Right? <laughs> and she's just smirking at me. And I said, JC, I said, what did you do? And I'm staring at her. I'm like, you ripped the tube out of your nose. And she was like, she pulls it out from under her back. And she's, I was like, Jace. I was like, are you kidding me? So then I wake my dad up. I'm like, dad, I was like, did you know that she pulled the tube out of her nose? And he was like, no, I didn't. And he's like, JC, are you serious? And she was hiding it behind her back. So no one, so she thought that no one could find, find it. Find it, <laughs> no one could say. So um, my dad's like, oh, I had a rough night with her. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, he was like, I woke up and she was trying to get out of bed. I said, what? Yeah, Wait. She, she just gets out of transplant, just wakes up from a coma, and she's trying to leave the bed. Here, she was hallucinating that she was in my grandparents' house. Yeah. And she was trying to get out of bed to go pee or something. Like, you're trying I, to go to the bathroom, right? Wait, because this is what I remember from it. So, and I was having these hallucinations, obviously, and I was in the bed, and it was dark out. I remember it was pitch black in my room. And the computer monitor. Well, Daddy don't sleep with a TV on. I know. He don't sleep with a candle on. Yeah, he don't sleep with a Any type of light, it, it, he can't sleep or something. I remember because the computer screen, for some reason, looked like a TV screen to me. And I saw it, and the way my IC room was set up was the door was over here, 
and like the windows back there, but it was covered. And the t there, the computer was in front of the bed. So I thought for some reason it was a TV screen and mm -hmm. it's somewhat set up like my grandma and grandpa's bedroom in their house. And I go in there like with my grandma or whatever, like to watch my grandma like get ready or whatever, like we'll talk or whatever. So I'm like used to being in there. And I turn my head and I swear I could see, I could see I'm in my grandpa's house. And I thought for some reason my grandpa was in the back room, which is my room. And I was going, pop. And no, I'm and there's yelling. Some, there's something else about that too that I have to include because I think you forget. Probably. And I was like, pop, pop. And I, I think I felt like I had to pee. And so I was trying to nudge myself and I'm like, why am I so heavy? But let alone, my, I have still so much stuff in me from meds and all. And I have straps and, like, stuff on, like, heavy yeah, have, weights and yeah. all. Like, on my bones. I had these, like, pump things that were on my legs to keep the circulation going. So, they were heavy, let alone. And they were, like, pumping my circulation, right? That's what they're for. And, um... You had to keep the blood flowing through your body because you were just yeah. laying there still for... Days. For, like, weeks. You were in a coma. And I was just, like... And I was just, like, trying to move. I'm trying to yell, pop, and he's not responding. And I'm like, huh? No one came in my room. Um, I was like, okay. And another thing that she was doing when she was, like, trying to, like, you know, get my grandpa's attention and her hallucination was she kept hitting her pain, your pain Oh, uh, yeah, my pain and button. And I asked her because the nurse, like, came in and said, yeah, she was hitting her pain button, like, repeatedly. So, you know, she and she started getting really upset because she thought that she was in trouble for, you know, like yeah. having her hallucination and all. And, like, I, you know, I was just sitting there and I was telling her, I was like, listen, no one's, like, you're not in trouble. No one's mm -hmm. mad at you. We understand, like, but you weren't in Pop's house. And I remember she was just, like, it, like once again, she was very, like, soft-spoken and, like, you could barely hear her. But she was saying, she said, I thought that was Pop. I was, I was hitting him, trying to wake him up. And she thought that, oh, really? you thought that, yeah, you told me that you thought that the button was Pop. And you were, uh, that's why you were clicking it, because you were trying to, like, nudge him to wake him up. Oh, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. In my head, Pop was across the hall. <laughs> yeah. Huh, well. I don't know weird yeah and that's when that day because i because obviously mommy found out like there's were like too many this was like too many hallucinations and like all like this was what within how many hours like it wasn't long i know after i left you had another one yeah i had another one too i don't remember that one i only remember i think that's the one there. i think that's the one when the ceiling was falling on you you said oh yeah sometimes when i have certain meds i don't know why but like the ceiling starts spinning and it looks like it's falling down. It's like a it's like a, a, like a luna, illusion illusion an illusion. Oh yeah. It I looks like that. that. I swear. And um, that's when my pain manager came and she was like, "All right." She's like, "You're a you're on way too much." She's like, "I thought like you'd be okay." She's like, "But you're actually on a little too much." She's like, "Let me knock some of this down." And she knocked she knocked this one like heavy med down and I never had a hallucination. She just like, knocked me down on that. So I was like, oh, okay. So, fact. Um, what does transplant mean to you? So I think the transplant, the meaning of transplant to me begins with um, organ donation. Mm -hmm. I think that organ donation is something beautiful and you can't really have a transplant without organ donation. Yep, that's what it means to me. It's something beautiful, and you're going to have a beautiful life out of it. Okay, and if you could meet not only this donor, but both my donors, what would you, what would, like, what would you say? Like, would you? Um, I would meet them. Um, I feel like there's nothing that you can say, do, buy. There's nothing that you could ever... <laughs> be doing oh, sorry, there's not nothing serious. there's nothing that you could ever do to thank somebody for making that decision because i think that's a huge decision um to make for a loved one who you just lost you know i think it's a huge decision to even make for yourself if you want to become an organ donor so i just really feel like there's nothing um there's like not a big enough thank you you know yeah um, all right, that's it. So, well, thank you so much for watching JC's journey and um, finally getting to meet me if you don't personally know me. But um, 
Yeah, I'm probably the coolest person in her life, and... Maybe you'll do, like, special videos on my channel. <gasps> I can do special videos? What if you did, like, your everyday, like, makeup routine, and then, like, I did mine? I say give this video a thumbs up. How many likes do you want to get? If you love me, and I'm definitely the star of her show. Should we try to get to, like, 50 likes? On, like, the actual video, not on, like, social media. Like, on the actual... On social media... On my video of, like, part three on this? Yeah. Do you, want to do, do, that. do you want to do 50? Let's do 50 likes on this video. And if you're seeing us on any social media, also give the social media post a like. And let's try to get up to at least 150 likes. And then we'll definitely do another video where... You're trying to set the bar too high. No, we're not. That's a good range. All right, whatever. And then we'll do something like special. Like, I don't know. Follow me on my socials because I'll probably do a poll and you guys can you guys Follow can vote. Follow my socials. All my socials are in the description. All right, bye guys.